Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the creation of a purchase order. So we go over to purchases, new purchase order. Now, before we get started, understand that purchase orders can be generated through mass processing screens based on inventory demands, based on drop ships and whatnot. So there's many different ways that a purchase order can be created. Today, we're just going to create a purchase order manually. So you'll notice a couple of things on the screen as it's a blank purchase order right now. The first is it's on hold. That's very important. In Acumatica, a purchase order is locked down when it's off hold. So during the hold process, that's when we create it, that's when we make our changes, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. The other thing you'll notice is that we have this unchecked approved box and approval details. This is an optional feature. This feature allows us to have purchase orders go through an approval process, which goes through your company tree map. So let's get started. So our purchase order date, we can change. Promised on is what we expect the vendor to deliver by. Uh, we'll pick a vendor, type a few letters of the vendor's name. Okay, and then we'll come down here and we'll start adding items. There's a couple of ways we can do that. The first way is we can type an item in, a few items, a few letters of the inventory ID or the description. Uh, there's a pop-up note for this item uh, telling us that there's a three-year warranty available. So, But we need to order five of these. This is the cost. We can adjust this. Uh, but this is the last cost that came in. Uh, last cost is updated. There's a preference in Acumatica to adjust the last cost either a few different ways. Uh, one of the most common ways is upon the receival of the bill uh, from the vendor, which confirms the final amount. Uh, but here I can say 245 if I wanted to change it. I can also put in a discount percentage. So let's say the vendor uh, sent me a flyer and they're saying that um, this particular item has a 5% discount. I can come in here and put a 5% discount in. The discount amount will automatically get calculated and now I have a, a discount. So that's one way to add a line item. The other way is to tap, uh, click add item here, and we get this screen that comes up that basically says the vendor's items. So it filters by the, this vendor's items, the items that this vendor sells. So I can go through and say, oh, you know what, I also need some of these and, and that kind of thing. So you can come in here and you could say I need you know, three of these and maybe uh, six of those and that kind of thing. So we can add and close. And we got another pop-up note. Okay. And again, notice we can come back in here. We can double click and change quantities, change amounts. This is currently on hold. So now at this point, as soon as I take it off hold, it goes because we have approvals enabled. And once again, approvals are optional. Approvals are based on rules that you configure, such as if the purchase order is over, let's say, $2,000, it could require an approval. If it's anything underneath that, no approval required. So there's all sorts of things you could do there. But keep in mind, again, this is optional. So because I'm the administrator up here, I can approve my own purchase order uh, because I'm in the company tree that way. So I'm going to say approve. And now <clears throat> the purchase order is in the open state. At this point, I can print it out. Okay, so this is my purchase order. My logo comes in. And I can hit the send button here and email it out to the vendor. So this template comes from the report form. So you can modify this report to include the template that you want. So this is not the most enhanced template uh, or eloquent I should say dear vendor for example you can change this in your report form to include certain fields such as the contact of the vendor okay but in any event I can come in here and I can make changes to it I could say dear vendor uh, please put a rush on this and any signature that's configured up here at the top right hand corner in my profile will show up here too. So my own signature will show here. So I'll hit the send button here. And now I've emailed this out. 
Now when I go back to my purchase order, a couple of things to note. First of all, you'll notice activities here. This shows all of the activities, tasks, uh, events, but in this case, email that have gone out. So if the vendor had replied, this is the email I sent out with the purchase order, but if they had replied and said, well, we can't rush this, we would have seen that reply right in here. We also, because we're logged in and because we have an email address attached to our name, in addition to getting the email recorded, the response recorded here, we would have gotten an email in our own inbox. So from our Outlook, we could have replied to that email and responded to the vendor. Our response would have come in here as a third entry and the vendor would have gotten the message. So you can, once you get an email started in Acumatica, um, assuming you configure your system email accounts correctly, um, once you get started, you can use your traditional email program and, and you'll still get the benefits of tracking all those emails. The other thing to note here is because it's no longer on hold, I can no longer make changes to the purchase order. This is by design. This is because we've already communicated this purchase order to the vendor and if somebody else came in and started making changes, then there'd be a real disconnect when the product was shipped and I was receiving it and I'm receiving something completely different. Maybe the price is wrong, maybe the quantity is incorrect, uh, and whatnot. So thanks for watching. That's how we create a purchase order. If you have additional questions, please see the end of the video for contact information. Thank you so much.